Okay, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started. I would like to go ahead and introduce the chair of our awards committee, Travis Johnson. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, as you can see, I'm kind of taller, so I'm going to make this a little less awkward. Uh, I'm going to echo the prior sentiments that we're glad to have everyone here. It's been a long, I don't think I can do this. It's been a long couple of years, and so uh, we're glad to be able to convene and be together again. The way I'm going to do the awards, I'm going to try to do them in order as best as possible. Uh, we'll start first with the, fir the first quarter excellence award for this year, and then I'll go through the new business for 2021, and then the lifetime achievement award. Uh, so first off, first quarter excellence award for Simmons Boutique, Miss Tiffany Webster. <laughs> so now we will uh, go with the new business for 2020, and that is Foodie Call and Miss Ann Hoskins. We'd also like to thank her for providing the meal today. And then um, we will go to the Lifetime Achievement Award for 2020. The way the committee selected this recipient, uh, it's a very detailed process, uh, but essentially it's someone who has provided a lot for the community uh, 25 years of service for the 2020 and 2021 uh, recipient. They have provided numerous things for our chamber and for our county. They have uh, shown an outstanding commitment to helping the chamber and to uh, spreading the, the influence of the chamber. So without further ado, 2020's Lifetime Achievement Award winner is Alan Maddox with Five Star Realty. <laughs> <laughs> so we fast forward to 2021 uh, and our new business for 2021 was Southern Charm and Christina Burris. daughter too. Awesome. Congratulations. And then last but certainly not least, our 2021 Lifetime Achievement Award. Uh, again, same, uh, same rubric for how we selected. Uh, these individuals have been in business for a long time. Uh, local businesses obviously in excess of 25 years. Uh, these individuals have shown an outstanding commitment to furthering the chamber as well as their, participa their participation uh, within our community and the chamber. So without further ado, 2021's recipient uh, of the Lifetime Achievement Award is the Bevel Brothers Funeral Home. And they're not in attendance. Uh, so thank you all. Uh, good to have everyone back. Let's put our hands together again for all these award winners. Next, I want to introduce Mr. Josh Coppage. He's going to continue with uh, his portion of today's uh, meeting. All right, so now the meat and potatoes for the chicken and dumplings of our, um, our speaker is going to be David Johnson, our judge executive. I'm supposed to have done this already. I'm sorry. Um, David, most people know him, but he was first elected as judge executive in 2010. He's a lifelong resident of Ohio County, except for the two years that he went to the U.S. military as a U.S. Army. Um, both sides of his ancestors um, have lived in Ohio County for over 200 years. Um, he's a certified manufactured uh, manufacturing engineer. He worked at Cowden and Thomas Industries in Ohio County. Um, before becoming judge executive, he worked 
on this grounds, 26 years as Ohio County's first park and rec recreation director. He's also a master electrician, so please welcome David Johnson. Thank you. This is quite an honor to do this. And this is my 12th one. 11 in, this makes 11 in person. Of course, last year was on Zoom. But uh, it's quite, a, quite an honor. Uh, the subject today is the state of our county. And the state of our county is good. It really is. Our economy is growing. We're focused on industrial expansion and recruitment of new businesses. We're developing our industrial properties and strengthen our attractiveness for foreign and domestic direct investment in our county. Our roads are constantly being improved and we're continuously looking for all sources of funding to do so. Bridges are being uh, replaced as needed. My goal long term has been on this subject of roads. I want to get them to the point that we can change the subject. Uh, that has been the subject here for uh, 50, 60 years, and uh, we're ready to change it and by, by having it done, not by neglecting it. Uh, our quality of life here is good. We're working on upgrades at our parks. We've recently completed the waterways, trails, and canoes and kayak accesses, making it accessible to our uh, citizens. That's Rough River. Our golf course had a record year last year, and the conditions are great for it to be a better one this time. Uh, we have a good disc golf course as well, and the trails here on the park uh, are being used every day by a lot of people, uh, as well as all the other facilities, and, uh, and we're just really uh, proud of that. We were hit hard by COVID-19, but our services, is provided by the county never stopped. Uh, we had many partners in battle with that, including the Ohio County uh, Healthcare, which uh, I still start to say Ohio County Hospital, but I'm little by little I'm getting it right. Uh, but the word hospital is correct on the next thing I want to tell you. Uh, we are right now in the beginning stages of a $23 million expansion at the Ohio County Hospital. Uh, and uh, why I'm, I'm excited about that for a bunch of reasons, to have it here. But this is gonna put our hospital on the, uh, good financial standing with the surgical wings. And then we're gonna urge them, CC never heard this before, to, to expand our services that we're not having at this time because the surgical wing will put us on good financial standing. Uh, she shook her head. I think she may have heard it before. Hey, yeah. yeah. Uh, you've heard about the American Rescue uh, Plan that the, uh, that the federal government passed and passed on down to local governments. They gave us a substantial amount of money, but it also had guidelines with what how you, uh, things you were to do with it. And we've used it on those guidelines to help our community uh, as much as possible. One of the things I'm the most proud of is we have a new program we call the ARCH program. Uh, it is a, uh, it was dreamed up by the, myself and the rest of the fiscal court. This, we've had this on our mind for a long time. What can we do to stop the revolving door on the jails and the prisons? Uh, we, we almost uh, set it up for, for failure, the, the way we've done it. But we, we now have this program. We've hired a gentleman to, to uh, manage it for us. Jimmy Cantrell is his name. He's done a wonderful job. And uh, it's really going to work. We've already seen it in the short time it's been there. And uh, the thing is to give people the tools they need to succeed and not have it set up where they're... Uh, uh, destined to fail, and that includes uh, resources they need to live, as well as if they need treatment, and uh, if they need housing, transportation, or whatever, to, and, and uh, employment, and all these things are helping them get, and it's it's working. It's working great. 
Uh, also, with the same fund, we're looking at uh, starting a, uh, a homeless shelter. We're working on that. It's next fiscal court meeting after it. We're having a community meeting to talk about that more. Um, another thing, along this same line of talk, as you know, uh, it's a challenge for our county as well as many counties to uh, provide for housing for the uh, incarcerated people. Uh, I'm trying to get away from the word prisoner and inmate, so I'm trying to make it sound better. But uh, we've made a deal with Butler and Edmondson counties called an interlocal agreement. That means we're now out searching for the money to build a, a, a regional jail they'll house all three counties it's butler edmondson and ohio county and that's going to save the counties a lot of money if we get this done and and i, I believe we will i'm very optimistic about it many things are are good in our county like the rest of the world inflation is such a challenge i don't know where it'll stop but why i'll tell you why it's a little bit more uh, challenging for government than it is for uh, local business. Uh, local business, you have to give your employees a raise, you can raise the price of your product. I mean, you have to, to do it. Government, it's not that easy to do, uh, you, to, to raise the uh, revenue to offset that inflation. So that's going to be our challenge for the next few years. We've got it figured out for the coming year. But after that, it's, it's just going to be a challenge. We just got to keep battling how we're going to handle that. And I'm determined that no services will be cut. But like I say, it's going to be quite a challenge to uh, uh, pay what we need to pay to keep our employees on the job. And I think you've got it in private as well. But like I said, you do have that one option that we don't. One of the things as much as everything else is going good in the county, I'm going to tell you one other challenge we've got. And myself, the magistrates, and our staff have constantly worked on trying to uh, uh, improve the internet in the county. We've worked uh, diligently with uh, Kentucky uh, Connect Grad, which we are a part of. We're, we're a partner in that our county is. We also have Kentucky Wired program which with state, federal, local governments has spent over 10 billion with a B to try to improve internet. And some of the infrastructure is here. We have a lot of fiber that's uh, on poles and in the ground, but not hooked to anybody yet. So however that might work, we still, we're highly invested in that to be part of it. Our most recent thing that we're doing to try to uh, uh, help with the internet problem in our county. It's worked with our local utility companies that already has uh, a lot of the mechanisms in place to provide it. And we're hoping we can work with those uh, utility companies to provide the middle and the last mile of the fiber internet to everybody's house in the county. That's our, that's our goal. And uh, I'm optimistic that it can work. Even though, like I said, I started working on this day one in office. But it's still something we're working on every day. It's quite a challenge. But I'm quite optimistic that within a year or so, we're going to be a much better place on the Internet than we are now. Uh, on tourism, we're so happy with uh, Beaver Dam's success at the amphitheater. That is really provided for Ohio County tourism. <laughs> and uh, I, so, I so appreciate the efforts of uh, Paul and the, and the city commission over there to... Uh, uh, think about this and to make it work and to found the tool to fund it and, and everything and I'm just really proud of it and uh, I do want to remind you one more time that Beaver Dam is in Ohio County uh, there's an inside joke there with Paul and I uh, and where I saw on tourism we're happy with the success of the bluegrass uh, music in our county and we're happy that the Jerusalem Festival is back and running. And we also have many tourists come through for what is here, the uh, Bill Monroe Museum, the cemetery, Uncle Penn's cabin, and the Rosine Barn. 
uh, that those are things that people come here all the time to to see. And uh, I just really appreciate y'all giving me this time. I'm going to repeat one more time that the state of the Lyle County is good. Anybody have any questions for me? Thank you. Thank you, David, for speaking today. Um, I'm going to real quick give a, an update on um, the Next Gen Leadership Program. This is, has been an amazing program. It's funny that I'm giving the update because I'm probably the least likely person to know actually how to do the program because it's technology and that's a little past what I know these days. So it's, but it's great. The kids are doing great. Um, we go into the high school, we have 42 students. So we have juniors and seniors at the high school um, and they are doing, it's called a JA Titan program. And what that is, is um, basically they, they're in teams of three or four students. We've had guest speakers, Tiffany has come and spoke for us and um, David Moore's coming tomorrow. He's gonna speak, but they play this game and they basically are owning their own company. They're the CEO of their own company, uh, Telephones, right? Yes. Telephone business, okay. And um, so what, what has been really cool is March 30th, they're gonna have their competition and um, there's a scholarship involved. So if anybody would like to donate that, we are still taking donations for that scholarship. We would greatly appreciate that. We're up to $1,500. So three or four students will be splitting that money um, and however much else comes in, we could even do first prize, second prize, that kind of thing. So um, also in April, um, we will be going on um, several field trips that we're excited about. So what we're doing right now is every other Wednesday, we go into the high school and we meet with these students um, in the lunchroom and, and we will have our guest speaker or we'll have our lesson that we do on owning a business. And then they play the game of owning their own business. And that game will throw things at them. So I'm glad you're shaking your head like, yeah, you got that right. That game will throw things at them. Um, real, real world experience, though, that we deal with every day owning our own business, you know, COVID, <laughs> those kind of things. So, so things you don't expect to happen. And, and then their um, profit loss will go up and down and they have to. And it's really neat. It's to uh, when we started this program and Chase, I'm going to talk about him because he's not here. When he first presented it, it was like deer in the head, like, look for everybody. And, but now they're cheering, you can hear them, they're, you know, like, look where we're at. And so it's fun to watch, it's gone great. I think it'll be even better next year. This is, this was a, can we do it, can we not do it kind of year. And we, we were able, we finally got to go into the school and do it. We appreciate the high school for letting us come in. Um, so anyway, our field trips that we're gonna do is gonna be uh, Sicilian Bank. We're gonna go um, do finance with them one day, um, the community center and the courthouse. So all the kids are gonna get to do that. And then we have an all day field trip. All of these will take place in April. The, and we're gonna tour the national office furniture, Bill Monroe home place. And then we're coming here to the airport and the kids are gonna get to go fly, if weather permitting. So it's super cool program. They're very excited. They're learning a lot. Um, I have a daughter in college who wishes she had done this program. She keeps my other daughters actually in the program and she keeps telling her, pay attention, pay attention. This stuff matters. So it's, it's really neat. If you guys want to know more about it, just come see me or Josh and Sarah, whoever, you know, we can, we can talk to you about it. Yes, yes, you can come sit in tomorrow. Tomorrow will be David Moore's going to speak, and then um, they're going to be, we've got three different games set up for them to play with their team, and then in two weeks they actually do the competition. So, um, and then again, we, we plan on doing this every year. So, yeah, okay, well, thank you. I'm Chuck Price. I'm with the membership development. Um, in the fall, we uh, got together as a committee 
to try to think of some things that we could do to promote businesses uh, more so than we have in the past. So what we came up with is our business in the spotlight. Some of you may have seen it in the newsletters. Um, and what that is, <clears throat> so we're, we're taking our entire membership roster and we're starting starting at A and going through, uh, through the roster. And <clears throat> so <clears throat> the business will be promoted both on our website and in our newsletter on social media uh, and whatnot. Uh, about two weeks before your business uh, is included or is, is uh, put in the newsletter, uh, Judy will send a email uh, questionnaire. Uh, the questionnaire is basically uh, company information, address, and then there is a segment where you can promote yourself. Uh, anything that you think that the community needs to know or that you want them to know, that's your, that's your spot to, to brag on yourself. And then at the beginning of the month, Judy will put it in the newsletter and on social media. And we hope that this will you know, not only promote Charles' businesses for other chamber members, but the community as well. As well. And you know, we talk a lot about uh, Shop Local, and we hope that this will you know, help with that. Uh, so thank you. Okay, guys, we got just a couple more things before we dismiss. Um, we do have five positions that are coming open on our board for the 22, 2022 and 2023 term. So if any of you all are interested, please get with Judy in the back or myself or Josh, and we will talk to you about that. Then Josh is going to speak again. Um, so I'm Josh, I'm the Vice President of the Chamber of Commerce. Again, I've been president before, but um, so I'm also over the program committee. Um, so next month's, so I had a really easy time um, last year and the year before because I didn't have to do a program because we had very little um, to do with the chamber because um, of COVID. So uh, next month we're having a um, meet and greet with candidates that will be decided upon in the primary. So the the judges um, elect uh, judges campaigns and then the sheriff and I think the fifth district magistrate are the three that we're going to have a kind of spotlight to kind of uh, get some people's ideas and answer some questions that we might have to deal with the business. We're um, so if you're interested in uh, that, please come back um, next month. Also, if you have any questions you would like for us to ask them that has something to do with the business, um, and for each of those um, positions that are going that are being uh, uh, being campaigned for, please let us know. We'll be more than happy to add those um, to the list of things. So that's all I have for the program. Yes, and as Josh said, that meeting is going to be on April 19th, and it'll be at 1130 here. And then grad COVID-19 working capital funds expire soon. Applications will be taken until May 1st or until the funds are depleted. There are some applications on the table in the back by the door. And then last, we have our door prize drawing. And this drawing is for two tickets to Marcy Land at the Beaver Dam Amphitheater. So thank you, Beaver Dam Tourism, for those. So get your tickets ready. Yes, and the winner will see Judy in the back. She'll have those tickets for you.
to get to see Judy in the back. All right. And then again, meeting April 19th, 11:30 here at the Senior Center. Yes. I am the business services consultant for the Career Center. We are having an Ohio County job fair on March 25th from 10 to 2 at Beaver Dam City Hall. So if you are an employer and you need or want to attend that, <laughs> let me know so I can make sure we reserve a table for you, okay? Thanks. Sorry. Okay, did everybody hear March that? 25th. March 25th, 10 to 2. Beaver Dam City Hall. At Beaver Dam City Hall, a job fair. So if anyone's interested. Does anybody else have anything? Okay, well, we will see you next month. Stop.